This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, ho there, Steph Cutter Diamond. Welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, June 10th, July 10th, pardon it, in the year 2016, the 15th edition of the European Championships was held at the Stade de France in France, the home country French against the unknown Portuguese squad. This was a key matchup. So let's get some context here. This was the first time Euro the European Championships went from 16 teams to 24. It used to be only 8 teams and then they would go to a 16 team format by 96 and then in 2016 they decided screw it let's do 24. So 24 teams European countries would face each other off. It was a key moment and all that. For European soccer. That well, 16 teams and then you got 8 extra qualification chances. So it was huge. Group A saw France, the home country French take on Switzerland, their internal rivals, Albania and Romania. France did pretty well, two wins and a tie. Switzerland also qualified with five points, with two, a, a win and two draws. Albania did beat Romania, but nothing else happened. In Group B, you had the two home nations, Wales and England, taking on each other. And they will face each other. They almost face each other in the. Yeah, and they will face each other in the 2022 World Cup in the group stage, no matter what. So anyway, Wales and England both did well. England were, was supposed to take the group of Wales, Slovakia, and Russia. Unfortunately, they didn't take the group. The Wales, the Welsh won two and lost one. Yes, they did lose to England, but England ended up winning once and tying twice, tying the lowly Slovaks and Russians. Slovakia did pretty well beating Russia. Russia would be sulking until they got to the World Cup of 2018 on Russian soil. Let's not talk about how Russia got posed to the 2022 World Cup qualifying spot, but whatever. So yeah, so England didn't do as well. Germany and Poland crushed Group C with two wins and a tie each. Gold differential said that Germany would win the group instead of Poland, even though Germany and Poland tied nil-nil in the second game of the match. Northern Ireland did beat Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine just couldn't pull anything out of the hat. In Group D, Croatia and Spain qualified easily with Turkey and the Czechs posed and all that. Group E saw Italy and Belgium qualify 1-2. Italy beat Belgium head to head that meant that they would be the group of top of group E. Ireland beat Sweden in a tight no, Ireland beat Italy, but Italy rested all their players because they were two and L, so yeah, Ireland did their job. Group F Group F saw Portugal in a group of Hungary, Iceland and Austria. And you're thinking, well Portugal's gonna go three for three. No, they did go three for three. In ties. Portugal had a had a one nothing lead on Iceland and blew it, tied one one. Portugal couldn't score against Austria, which was weird. And they had that famous three three tie with Hungary that the Hungarians actually were playing with Portugal. So Portugal had three ties. And you're thinking, wait a minute, the eight to third. How did they get to the? No, don't say just. I'll tell you. So well, Hungary won the group based on goal differential. Iceland took second. Like the World Cups in 86, 90, and 94, when they, they had 24 teams instead of the 16 or the 32, the top four teams, based off of points, would get in. So Slovakia and Ireland, who took third place with four points with a win, a loss, and a tie, both, both qualified easily for the knockout stages. And that Portugal, Northern Ireland, Turkey, and Albania. With the three points. But strange as it sounded, Portugal, even though they tied three times against 
and against teams that they should not have tied, they should have beaten, like Austria, Iceland, and Hungary, got in. And so did Northern Ireland. However, Albanian and Turkish fans were pissed off because Portugal got through with three ties, whereas Turkey and Albania both won a game, and yet, by goal differential, they both failed. So, that kind of is unfair. Anyway, in the round of 16, Portugal took on Croatia, and in the 117th minute, well, 90 minutes extra, uh, regular time, and then 30 minutes of extra time, if you can't score, you got penalties. So, in the near the end of the game, Ricardo Quaresma put up a goal in extra time to beat Croatia. France would play Ireland in the round 16 and won 2-1 thanks to two Anton Griezmann goals. In the quarterfinals, Portugal and Poland were tight with each other. The great Robert Lewandowski for Poland made it 1-0. Portugal in the 53rd minute got a goal by Sanchez to tie the game. Renato Sanchez to tie the game. On penalties, Portugal made all theirs. Cristiano Ronaldo, Sanchez, Martinho, Nani, and Quiresma all scored. But Poland missed one. It was Blas Puskowski. France would be in the fourth quarter final against Iceland, the team that shocked everyone by beating England, but England got two folds themselves. France crushed Iceland 5 2. Two goals by Oliver Giroud and goals, and goals by Pogba Payet. Well, Paul Pogba, Dimitri Payet, and Anton Griezmann. In the semifinals, Portugal beat Wales 2 0. Wales shocked everyone by getting to the semifinals in the first place. I mean, they took down Northern Ireland and took down Belgium, which was shocking. I mean, you lose to, you beat Belgium, the so called number one team in the world. So Portugal beat Wales 2 0 on goals by CR7 and Nani. In the second semifinal, the French took on the Germans, and as a German fan, I was hoping for a Portugal Germany match, and then Germany to beat Portugal, and maybe. I get rid of my grudge against Portugal. But France scored two goals for Griezmann. And, well, we got to the final. It was the final between Portugal and France. It was huge. It was like, how the heck did Portugal get through? It was like, they had three terrible games in the group stages, couldn't beat their guys, and then all of a sudden, you know, they beat Croatia in extra time, Poland on penalties, and, well, it was Wales. So, anyway, it was a good game. Unfortunately, though, it's, it started out terribly for Portugal. In the 25th minute, Cristiano Ronaldo, who had an injury, could not go. He was just beaten. So they had to use Ricardo Quaresma to come in for CR7 in the starting lineup. Portugal also had Warl Motino come in for Adrian Silva and Eder, remember the name, take on stuff from replacing Renato Sanchez. France used their three substitutes. Kingsley Coleman came in for Dimitri Payet. Andre Pierre Chignac came in for Oli Giroud. And Anthony Marshall came in for Musa Sissoko. It was like, what the heck? And then in the 109th minute, the first 90 minutes, no goals. And then it was whoever scored the most goals in the next 30 minutes wins the match. Otherwise, we go to penalty kicks. No goals in goal. France had a few great chances, but for some strange reason, they made a mistake. And Edar, the striker that rarely scored, scored a key goal. And it was just amazing all of that. Edgar got a, struck a 25-yard shot that beat Hugo Lloris to the right, and Portugal had a 1-0 lead. Still time for France to tie or take or win, take the win, but they didn't. Portugal shocked the world by winning Euro 2016, and obviously pissing me off. As as an England fan, I've had a grudge against Portugal since CR7's stupid wink that got. Wayne Rooney kicked out of the game in 2006. Rooney, I think, would have gotten in trouble anyway, but the frickin' wink. And there were teammates on Man U, which pissed me off. So I felt not to be happy with the Portuguese soccer team. Now, let me iterate. I said the Portuguese soccer team, not Portuguese people in common. I just had a grudge for the soccer team, and 
I said the grudge will end when England does better than Portugal at a major event. Unfortunately, though, that still continued. I was so pissed off, I vowed to take a 24-hour foul of silence. But I cut it down to 12. So, yeah, for 12 hours, I didn't say one fucking word. That's how pissed off I was. Sorry to say it, but, you know, me. But, then again, the Portuguese uh, grudge actually ended in 2018 when England went all the way to the fi Final Four in the World Cup. And Portugal somehow, in some way, blew their first game. Even though I picked Portugal to win their knockout game, their first knockout game, but they didn't. It's like pathetic. I mean, I feel for Albanian fans and Turkish fans when they won a game in Euro 2016, and yet they didn't get in as one of the third place teams because Portugal's three ties had them a goal differential of nothing. So yeah, Portugal was uninspired, and then all of a sudden, you know, they were just playing for keeps, I guess. I mean, when you play yawning, boring football, I think they were just playing boring football. Or Cagliacci Bowl, if you're an Italian fan. But yeah, Portugal won the Euros. And all that. And everyone in Cambridge and Kitchener must have been going nuts. I mean, down the road from where I am is a Portuguese um, community center. And they went nuts. So, of course, I was pissed off. As I always am. But... What, what can you do? You can't change history. So, yeah, Portugal got their first major trophy as a nation. Can't beat that, I guess. Anyway, I'm just diving to do.